Hi everybody, I'm Joe Calderon. Do you want a place where you can get only Capital Region sports all the time, whenever you want it, free? You don't need cable or a username or a password to get the shows and highlights you want? Well, I've got great news for you. Coming soon, a new home for local sports, and that home will be CapitalRegionSportsNet.com. We are taking covering local sports to the next level. You'll get highlights of the biggest games in the Capital Region same day. So for example, if the game happens that day, you'll get the highlights that day. But CapitalRegionSportsNet.com is a lot more than just the highlights. It's also full 30-minute weekly shows with interviews and features that bring you closer to your favorite teams, players, and coaches. From high school, to college, to the pros, to horse racing in Saratoga, to dirt track racing at Fonda, Malta, and Lebanon Valley. If it's in the Capital Region, it will be on CapitalRegionSportsNet.com. Now, as an advertiser, it's always about getting the most bang for your buck. So you're probably saying, why would I want to spend my hard-earned money on something that's solely on the internet? Well, that, my friends, is a very easy question to answer. Here are some numbers you cannot dispute. On YouTube alone, over 6 billion hours of video are watched each month. There are over a million advertisers using Google ad platforms. And for those who question whether or not people are watching shows on the internet in 2014, according to Nielsen, the company that measures and monitors what consumers watch, YouTube reaches more U.S. adults ages 18 to 34 than any cable network in existence. So now you're probably saying, okay, what does a show on CapitalRegionSportsNet.com look like? I'm glad you asked. It is my honor to introduce to you the In It To Win It high school sports show on CapitalRegionSportsNet.com. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the In It to Win It high school sports show right here on CapitalRegionSportsNet.com. I'm your host, Joe Calderon. Later in the show, we will introduce you to our Section 2 shining star, but what better place to start the show than with high school football? Believe it or not, week one in the books, and what better place to start than with the defending Class A champs in New York State, the Queensberry Spartans. Many of the guys from last year's state title team back and boy did it look it against Niskayuna in the season opener on Saturday. Early first quarter, Hunter Scott with some great blocking ahead of him. And folks, he's tiptoeing up the sidelines and if he was just a size smaller, he might have gotten in. Just stepped out of bounds at the 20 yard line. No worries though, Tyrell Adams says, I got your back dog. Finishes off the drive, Spartans go for two. They don't get it. It is six nothing Queensberry. Now Niski, their first offensive series, it didn't go so well. Off the snap, it's a fumble and the Spartans recover. The defense all sorts of fired up. The offense with great field position and they capitalize. It is Adams again. Two touchdowns in about five minutes, not too shabby. The Spartans offense racked up 321 yards rushing in the first half. What an opener for Queensberry. They dominate Niski. They beat the Silver Warriors 49 zip. And we'll stay up north. A nice crowd on hand for this interdivisional matchup. Saratoga out of the Empire Division taking on LaSalle out of the Liberty Division. Now, last year, head coach Terry Jones and the Saratoga Blue Streaks won their first playoff game since 2009. For most programs, that's not a drought. For Saratoga, it is. Terry and the boys hoping for bigger and better things in 2014. Well, so are the cadets. LaSalle and head coach Al Rapp looking to crash this Saratoga Blue Streaks toga party. We pick this one up early third quarter now. Toga with a two touchdown lead at 28-14, but the cadets looking to mount a comeback. Matt Etman with the carry right here, picking up some nice yardage, and you can add a few more yards onto that run. The Blue Streaks call for the face mask, keeping the LaSalle drive alive. The cadets spreading the well. Dan Fachi over here takes the toss, gets the cadets inside the Saratoga 20 yard line, and a few plays later, the cadets cash in on the QB sneak from a yard out. It is now just a one touchdown game. That's it. But back come the blue streaks and it's on the ground. 
Robert Hofton. Right up the middle, 40 yards for the touchdown. If you like offense, you like this game. The two teams combined for 800 yards of total offense and 80 points. Saratoga wins this one, 42-28. Next up for Toga, they're at Shaker Friday. LaSalle will host CBA in the annual battle for the Sabre. Out in the Electric City, Schenectady opening the season at home, hosting the Scotties of Ballston Spa. Fourth quarter, Schenectady up just 15 to 10, and this was a huge play. On third and 22, sophomore quarterback Brandon Gwinner finds Alex Rodriguez, A-Rod picking up the huge first down, keeping the Patriots drive going. A few plays later, Colby Youngblood scampers in from the nine yard line to give Schenectady the 21-10 lead. They would go on to win this one 21-10. Winner, a winner on this night, 13 of 21 for 217 yards passing and a touchdown. Next up for the Patriots, they take on Albany September the 13th. That one will be played at U Albany. It's a seven o'clock kickoff, that's pretty cool. Boston Spa will host Bethlehem on Friday. Burnt Hill is opening at home against Scotia. The Spartans hosting the Tartans, always fun. Burnt Hill's lost a heartbreaker to Queensbury in last year's Class A Super Bowl, preventing them from making another trip to the Carrier Dome. They're hoping to get back this season, but first things first, game one, first quarter, scoreless. He has a scholarship to play at Notre Dame, baseball, but he's still one heck of a football player. Daniel Maynard takes the handoff and takes it to the house. 80 yards for the touchdown. It is 7-0 BHBL. Maynard on the sidelines. Did you guys see that? 80 yards? I do it all the time. The Spartans, known for their defense. Seamus McCormick with the sack right there. And that, my friends, gets the Burnt Hills faithful all fired up. It's the one thing I love about Burnt Hills, school spirit, Really never an issue at Burnt Hills, Boston Lake. Now the Tartans trying to get something going. Scotia quarterback, Dan Zeglin, scrambling, poor kid, just trying to keep a drive alive, but that defense swarming all over the place for Burnt Hills. Later in the first half now, more from Maynard, the senior, 220 yards rushing in the opener, and Burnt Hills goes on to win this one. 34-14, next up for the Spartans. They travel to Green Tech Friday night. Scotia will host Gloversville week two. The Huskies of Gloversville hosting Green Tech. This one was fun to watch. First quarter, no score. Tyler McCready with the pitch to Quintel McGee, and he takes care of the rest. The 16-yard touchdown run puts Gloversville up six to nothing after a failed extra point. The Eagles answering right back though. Check out this throw on the run by Jordan Hotelling. Quite the arm there on Hotelling. Finds Rakeed Johnson, who gets the Eagles deep into Gloversville territory, and that play sets up this play. The plunge into the end zone by BLAMO. Blam Okada, great name, great game. Eagles fail on the two-point conversion. We're tied at six, but back come the Huskies. This one was back and forth throughout. It's McGee again. He had two touchdowns in this one. Now, not shown in the highlights, Taylor McCready with a big game for the Huskies. 185 yards passing, four touchdowns. Gloversville wins this shootout, 48-40. Gloversville at Scotia Week 2. Green Tech hosts Burt Hills next week. More Class A action. Mohan taking on Lansingburg, and this one had its sloppy moments. I like this one. Nate Stilson for Mahonison finds Andrew LaBelle. Only problem is LaBelle plays for Lansingburg. LaBelle with the INT there, but Stilson would redeem himself moments later. Rodney Van Ness feeling the pressure, and guess who comes up with the interception? You guessed it, Nate Stilson. Mahonison looking very impressive in their opener. They would go on to beat Lansingburg 43-7. Next up for the Mighty Warriors, they host Amsterdam Friday, September 12th. Lansingburg will look to bounce back as they face Averill Park Week 2. When we come back on the In It to Win It High School Sports Show, more high school football highlights for you, including the reigning Kings in Class B, the Sabres of Shalmont. Different division, same team. You'll see what I'm talking about after the break. It's the In It to Win It High School Sports Show on CapitalRegionSportsNet.com. Hi, I'm Jim Miller. People often ask me, what is NYSCOBA? There are 26,000 state correction and law enforcement officers working throughout New York State. But there's more to their story. They support veterans by raising funds for wounded warriors through a hockey tournament. And statewide, 
They annually donate over $330,000 to charities. It is a privilege to serve as president of Knights Coba. We not only keep your community safe, we make it a better place to live. Hi everybody, I'm Joe Calderon and welcome back to the In It to Win It high school sports show right here on CapitalRegionSportsNet.com. You know, if you looked up heartbreak in the dictionary, you might just see the 2013 Shalmont Sabres football team. If you watch the game, you know what happened last year. The Sabres using that loss in the state title game as motivation for this year. And the reigning Class B champs are moving to a new division, leaving the West and going over to the Reinfurt division. And there they are, the reigning Class B Kings, the Sabres of Shalmont taking on Glens Falls. First quarter, scoreless. Hunter Gack, yakety yak, and he ain't coming back. He scores the touchdown there. They don't get the two point conversion. It is 6 0 Shalmont. And that was just the beginning, folks. Later on, Nick Gallo taking it to the house. Gallo, just nine carries, 113 yards rushing, three touchdowns. The Sabres rush for 477 yards in this one. I think their move to the right for division isn't going to be so bad. They beat Glens Falls 61 to nothing. Could one of these two teams challenge Mighty Shalmont for that right for division crown? Ravina taking on Albany Academy and Ravina looking good early. Already up 21 to six and adding on David Warnkin to Loken Frangella. That puts the Indians up 28 to six at the half. Warnkin just three completions, but all three were for touchdowns. Not a bad percentage. Maybe pick him up for fantasy. All right, the Cadets trying him out a comeback in the second half. What a game for Saratoga transfer Dakota Harvey in his first game as a cadet. Here he breaks off a 25-yard touchdown run to get the Cadets to within 16. The numbers on Harvey, 123 yards rushing and three touchdowns, but it was not enough. Ravina looks good in the opener. They beat Albany Academy 31-20. Super Bowl finalists from a year ago brought all the Perth host and Cohoes in a rematch of last year's Class B sectional semifinal. Pick it up in the second quarter with BP up seven to nothing, but the Tigers were on the move. Shelton Alston with some nifty moves, getting Cohoes deep into Patriots territory. That play would set up this play. Anthony Doomsnell to Christian Dickinson for the score. Cohoes goes for two and gets it. It is eight, seven Tigers, and it would stay that way until seconds remaining in this game. BP with one final crack at it. Famaletti, did you shoot this stuff or what? Who shot this up? Zach Moriel finds Connor Pingator, who's looking to score. He's making some moves here to get an additional yard or two, but fumbles the football, however. Biagio Buccifero is there to scoop it up, and he scores the game winner. BP wins this one. 14 to 8 is your final. Don't worry, soccer fans, we didn't forget about you. From football to football. Suburban Council and State Power Shen hosting Boston Spa Tuesday in the season opener for both teams. The Scotties giving the Plainsmen an early scare in this one. It was Boston Spa leading Mighty Shen one zip halfway through the first half, but after that, it was all Shen. The gorgeous ball up ahead to Tucker Marvin who puts it in the back of the onion basket. We're tied at one. Moments later now, Dante Salento over here, puts it over there. Shen takes a 2-1 lead. Shen led 3-1 at the half, and after that early one-zip deficit, the Plainsmen went on to score six unanswered. They beat Ballston Spa 6-1. Shen had themselves quite a week. They were 3-0 this week. They and Shaker are the only unbeaten teams in the North Division of the Suburban Council. More Suburban Council action in boys high school soccer. Silver Warriors of Miski flying high in their season opener against the Blue Streaks of Saratoga. Second half tied at one. Off the corner kick, it is senior striker Luke Ferranda with the nice header. His first goal of the 2014 season gives Niski the two to one lead and the Silver Warriors were not done yet. Niski on the move. Tyler Hanneth with the goal right here. Fear the beard. I don't know what kids are eating these days, but check out that thing. He's probably got to comb it out every single day. Niski leading three to one. He had two goals in this one. Niski goes on to beat Saratoga four to one. For more soccer scores and highlights, just go to our website. It is capitalregionsportsnet.com.
We told you, we're more than just the highlights here on CapitalRegionSportsNet.com. Coming up next, we'll introduce you to our first Section 2 Shining Star. It's the In It to Win It High School Sports Show on CapitalRegionSportsNet.com. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Jim Miller. People often ask me, what is NYSCOBA? They're 26,000 state correction and law enforcement officers working throughout New York State. But there's more to their story. They support veterans by raising funds for wounded warriors through a hockey tournament. And statewide, they annually donate over $330,000 to charities. It is a privilege to serve as president of Nice Coba. We not only keep your community safe, we make it a better place to live. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the In It to Win It High School Sports Show right here on CapitalRegionSportsNet.com. Allow me to introduce to you our first ever Section 2 Shining Star, Albany Academy's Stefan Kuhar. When we talk about being clutch, normally that means saving your best for last, performing when the lights are at their brightest. Enter Stefan Kuhar. He's the kind of player that that is extremely coachable, that's always willing to give you, you know, more than 100 percent and it just, uh, you know, working in the industry for a lot of years, he's really a special kid because those, those are the kids that you really go after, the kids that really want it and that, that are going to give you more. You know, I think he's, he's driven. Uh, I think uh, as an athlete, obviously, he's improved every year. The eighth grader that, you know, had a swing out of his shoes to get his forehand and backhand uh, to the other side of the net uh, to, the, to the player he is today. The area's best high school tennis player was expected to be the unquestioned leader going into his senior year at Academy, and he didn't disappoint. This is Steph's sport, you know, and, and with, it, with, it, with tennis, um, you know, when he's playing well, it seems the team plays, you know, so well, and that's why we won a lot of matches. Even before his last season, Stefan had a resume very few in Section 2 could match. He made states in 8th and ninth grade playing doubles, and then went on his own and made states his junior year in singles. The only thing missing? A trip to the USTA National Tennis Center in New York City as a Section 2 champ. You know, in years past, I had won as the third place finisher and the, the runner-up. Um, and, you know, when I began my varsity tennis career in eighth grade, you know, that was the ultimate goal, you know, be sectional champion. And the sectional thing, to tell you the truth, that was, uh, that was the big goal. He had three goals this year. He, he had hoped, hoped to be number one in his class. That happened, and that was no sure thing. He was a wonderful, bright kid. He wanted to get into Dartmouth, and he did. Uh, and he wanted to win the sectionals. Well, mission accomplished. On Memorial Day weekend, Stefan completed his personal Grand Slam, beating Scotia's Rob Schmitz in straight sets, not only avenging his only loss of the regular season, but capturing his first sectional title. He got to a point this year where he could turn it on and off depending who he was playing, and on, on that, that's the semifinal day and the final day. Steph turned it up. He played his best tennis on that day, he showed everyone that he was the best, and that, that, that was great for, you know, me to see because, uh, you know, I wanted him to achieve that goal, being Section 2 champ. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the In It to Win It High School Sports Show right here on CapitalRegionSportsNet.com. I'm Joe Calderon. Good luck to all the teams this week. We'll see you next time. I think the only problem I had with that show, I was having a bad hair day. Listen, all kidding aside, there you have it. You know what the website is about. You know what a show on the website looks like. And if I'm an advertiser now, I want the most bang for my buck, and I'll get it by advertising on CapitalRegionSportsNet.com. We'll be launching the website soon, so don't wait. Keep an eye on Facebook and Twitter for the website launch date. I'm Joe Calderon, and hope to see you as an advertiser on CapitalRegionSportsNet.com.